Hey everyone, it's Paul Simon with the law firm Simon Pascal. We're here for another episode of Simon Pascal Says. Uh, today we're actually going to cover uh, an article that we touched upon in our newsletter. Um, so if you want to get uh, included in our newsletter, uh, please email us at info at simonpascal.com or take a look at our website. But what we're going to cover today is basically three tips when it comes to employee discipline that we think can lead to a better work environment and perhaps more importantly help you avoid lawsuits. So let's kind of go through those three tips real quick here. The first one is the a performance improvement plan. And what we think uh, employers often do with performance improvement plans is tie those to discipline. And we think that you need to be separating those two things out. A performance improvement plan is meant to correct performance. It's not meant to discipline an employee. And so to the extent that you're using it as a form of discipline, that's how employees are gonna take it versus I need to look at this as a way to help me uh, perform better for you. Um, so that's the first one when you're looking at it. Um, and again, kind of a way to think about it when you're doing the actual performance improvement plan is simply how would you measure improvement on attitude or behavior. That's something that we often see uh, employers using for PIP. And that's just something that's very hard to calculate, very hard to actually say, this is what I need to see from you um, from a performance improvement plan uh, versus just simply a written discipline that says, you know, the expectation is that you are to improve your attitude or improve your behavior. The next tip uh, that we think employers need to look at is eliminating the idea of verbal warnings. A lot of employers do this. They've got the three-step discipline, verbal, written, and ultimately termination. Um, and we think that you need to eliminate verbal warnings. And the reason for that is a couple. First is how do you actually track a true verbal warning? The amount of cases that we deal with where an employer says, well, I gave two or three verbal warnings to the employee and the employee's general response is, I never received any sort of warning. And because it's truly verbal, the employer typically doesn't have any way to document that I gave them a verbal warning. Um, and the second reason that we think that you should eliminate the verbal warning is it, it oftentimes isn't understood by the employee that it is a verbal warning. So if you're a, someone who, when you give a verbal warning, writes down a note and puts it in the employee's file so you can actually document the, the verbal warning, which is a good thing, but the problem is the employee still may not understand that that communication that you gave them was an actual disciplinary warning. And so by giving a true written warning, you're identifying and communicating properly to the employee that they have in fact uh, been disciplined and then the expectation as to what they need to improve on, along with the warning that if they don't improve, ultimately they, they could be terminated. And then the, la the last uh, tip that we think when it comes to employee discipline that we see as an issue is just kind of the lack of honesty and discipline explanation. Um, and this is particularly true in terminations. And I think there's a number of reasons why um, employers aren't necessarily forthcoming with the reason for the termination. Some of it a lot of times is simply, uh, you know, we don't want to hurt an employee's feelings or we're not exactly sure how to frame it. Um, and so we do what's, you know, more general, you know, that you're just not the right fit. Um, that unfortunately a lot of times leads an employee to believe the reason I'm not the right fit is perhaps one of my protected categories. Um, and so what our uh, advice is, is either to simply, as, an, as a Texas employer, you don't have to give a reason for termination. So you can simply say, your employment has been terminated effective this date. Or if you're going to give the reason, give the actual reason and don't give, um, you know, the kitchen sink, you know, here's the 20 things throughout your 10 years of employment you did. Simply focus on, here's the ultimate reason we terminated you. We went through these three disciplinary steps and you failed to, to meet or you, you violated this policy and therefore you're terminated. Um, you know, that should, much, that should put you in a much better position when it comes to challenging both uh, an unemployment claim and then also if, if a lawsuit uh, comes about that you're able to say, here's the reason for termination and it's a non-discriminatory reason and so therefore we haven't violated the law. So those are our three tips today. We hope uh, you'll start to you'll look at those and utilize those uh, in your company. If you have any questions, please give us a shout and we'll see you next time.